Hello, everyone. My name is Joanne Donovan, and I'm the Chief Medical Officer for Catabasis. Thank you so much to PPMD for the opportunity to share information today about Edisol and Exent and our approach to developing an oral treatment for Duchenne. Now, Catabasis is a publicly traded company, and during this presentation, I'll be talking about things that may happen in the future. So I need to show you this slide. Now, Edisol and Exent is an oral drug in development for potentially everyone affected by Duchenne, regardless of mutation type. It's an NF-kappa B inhibitor, and it's not a steroid. We have data supporting Edisol and Exent for treatment alone, and we also believe that Edisol and Exent could potentially be used with other treatments, such as exon skipping therapies and gene therapies in development. We've seen that Edisol and Exent preserved muscle function and substantially slowed disease progression while being well tolerated in the phase two MOVE DMD trial. Today, I'm going to introduce Edisol and Exent and how it works and talk about our phase three Polaris DMD trial and review past results. Now, Edisol and Exent is an investigational agent not currently approved in any territory. Now, Edisol and Exent inhibits NF-kappa B, and we designed it that way because of the potential for broad therapeutic benefit in Duchenne. When boys are born with Duchenne, they lack dystrophin. However, it often takes a couple of years before symptoms are noticed. Now, what's happening during this time period? It's the absence of dystrophin and using their muscles that leads to chronic NF-kappa B activation which in turn leads to inflammation and fibrosis and creates a cycle of damage. So our intention by inhibiting NF-kappa B with Edisol and Exent is the goal of improving skeletal muscle function, preserving cardiac function, and also improving bone health with a decreased risk of fractures. Because the loss of dystrophin, chronic activation of NF-kappa B is a key driver of these processes. Now, Edisol and Exent is a NF-kappa B inhibitor. It's an orally administered small molecule, and it's a unique molecule that delivers salicylic acid and the omega-3 fatty acid DHA into our cells using our smart linker technology as shown on the right here, which you can see. It allows the molecule to be taken up in the cell and split to be pharmacologically active. Because of this unique pharmacological profile, Edisol and Exent inhibits NF-kappa B to a much greater degree than the individual components. Our fully enrolled phase three study, Polaris DMD, is a 12-month trial with Edisol and Exent for boys with Duchenne aged four to seven up to their eighth birthday who have been off steroids for at least six months. It is placebo controlled as needed for the FDA with two boys receiving Edisol and Exent from the beginning for each boy that receives placebo. After 12 months, all boys have the option to receive Edisol and Exent in our open label extension study called Galaxy DMD along with their eligible siblings. We've enrolled boys that have not been on steroids as there is potentially a partial overlap in mechanism between Edisol and Exent and steroids. Boys enrolled in the trial were also able to be on a stable dose of Exondis 51. Preclinically, we saw that Exondis almost doubled the amount of dystrophin produced by exon skipping in animal models. We expect to have results from this phase three trial in the fourth quarter of this year. Pending positive results, we then hope to file these results with the FDA. And I'd like to say a word about COVID-19 in today's environment. We're fortunate that our phase three trial was already up and running and fully enrolled. We're fortunate in the terms of the design of the study that the visits are fairly infrequent, occurring every three months, and that Edisol and Exent is an oral drug that patients are able to take at home. 
as always, our top priority in this setting is the health and safety of the patients enrolled in the trial. We're working closely with our clinical trial sites to prepare and execute plans to ensure the continuity of the study, to by enabling delivery of the study drug to patients' home, continued to safety monitoring, and alternative ways of conducting study visits. We've closely reviewed the guidances from FDA and the EMA in Europe with regard to clinical trials and are working to ensure that we're in alignment with both of these agencies. We're gonna to continue to closely monitor the situation with COVID-19 and we'll remain in close contact with our clinical trial sites and our partners that are working with us to ensure the safety and continued conduct of the trial. And fortunately, we don't believe our timeline has been affected and we've developed additional contingency plans to enable the continued conduct under various scenarios. So as I mentioned earlier, the primary endpoint for the Polaris DMD trial is the North Star Ambulatory Assessment. The North Star is a validated scale specifically developed to measure physical performance in ambulatory boys with Duchenne. It's important because it's a meaningful endpoint designed to reflect measures of everyday life. It's an endpoint that both the FDA and EMA regulatory agencies recognize. It's widely accepted and it's been shown to be reproducible and reliable for measuring change over time. Now in Polaris DMD, the primary endpoint is the North Star Ambulatory Assessment. You're probably familiar with it from clinic visits and includes activities like climbing up a stair or rising from a chair. There are three time function tests that are age appropriate for four to seven year olds. We're also looking at growth, heart and bone health in the Polaris DMD trial, as we believe etosolinexant has the potential to positively impact bone and heart health in Duchenne. We've seen boys continue to grow taller while taking etosolinexant, and I'll show a bit of those results later. We are monitoring the boys' growth in the Polaris study. Now, this is a map of our clinical trial sites for Polaris DMD. We asked patient advocacy organizations, families, and physicians for their input into designing this trial. Site visits are every three months, largely due to the safety profile that we've observed so far and our endpoints are measures representative of daily life. I also want to mention Galaxy DMD, the open label extension trial, which means that everyone participating in Polaris receives etosolinexant in the Galaxy DMD study. We had heard from families that had sons who participated in the phase two move DMD trial that they had other sons affected by Duchenne and wanted them to receive etosolinexant. Therefore, we're enrolling eligible siblings into Galaxy DMD. Once boys complete Polaris and continue into Galaxy, their eligible siblings can also have the opportunity to receive etosolinexant in Galaxy DMD. The primary focus of the Galaxy study is to continue to evaluate long-term safety in boys. Due to the safety profile we have seen to date, site visits in this trial are every six months. Now let's briefly review the results we've seen in the clinic with etosolinexant in the MOVE DMD trial. First of all, we've seen inhibition of NF-kappa B showing that etosolinexant is working the way that we expected it to. We also saw significant improvements in biomarkers such as CRP, a global marker of inflammation, and muscle enzymes, including CK. We've seen improvements in assessments of function compared to functional decline in the off treatment period. And we've seen improvements in muscle MRI that measures muscle inflammation in fat. We'll look at the functional results now. In the MOVE DMD trial, we enrolled 31 boys aged four to seven. And the trial had a built-in control period where we assessed boys off treatment and then on etosolinexant when they started at week zero there. The largely flat green horizontal line on this graph 
shows that once boys were on Edasol and Exent, they had preserved muscle function and stabilized their disease progression through 72 weeks on Edasol and Exent compared to the off treatment control period decline that was shown on the left. And this is for the North Star ambulatory assessment. We also saw similar stabilization with Edasol and Exent treatment for the three time function tests, the 10 meter walk run, the forced air climb, and the time to stand. In more than 100 patient years of exposure cumulatively, we've seen that Edasol and Exent has been well tolerated. The majority of adverse events have been mild in nature, with the most common adverse event being diarrhea, generally mild and transient. We were also uh, pleased to see that boys on Edasol and Exent have grown like their unaffected peers, gaining height over the 72 weeks and a small amount of age appropriate weight. On average, boys grew a little more than two inches per year. As Edasol and Exent is not a steroid, we don't see and don't expect to see any of the typical steroid associated side effects. Before I wrap up, I'd like to quickly introduce the Catabasis team. We're a close-knit, passionate team working hard to develop a potential new therapy with the hope of benefiting everyone affected by Duchenne. Right here, we're all together. We're all working at home uh, individually uh, as a, a team to move this forward. And our focus is on Edasol and Exent, uh, our lead program for the treatment of Duchenne. We also recently announced a partnership with Duchesne UK to study Edasol and Exent in boys and men that are non-ambulatory. And we'll share more information about this potential phase two study in the coming months. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share with you. For those of you who are interested in seeing updates along the way, we will share frequent updates on social media. And you can follow Catabasis Pharma on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and checking out our website as well, where you can sign up to receive our newsletter. And please send questions, we're happy to answer questions. Thank you so much.